Imagine that we had a 2 by 12 chocolate bar that looked like this. In the bottom left corner, the square is poisoned. We're going to play a game using this chocolate bar, where we try to avoid eating that poison. Specifically, we are going to take turns eating from this chocolate bar from the top right corner. And we will continue to do so until one of the players has consumed the poison. That player will lose, and the opposing player will win. Because we are eating from the top right corner, the rule is that on any given turn, a player chooses a square and must consume all chocolate above and to the right of it. For example, if you went first and you chose this as your opening move, you would have to consume eight pieces of chocolate in total, everything above it and everything to the right of it. Then it becomes my turn. I might choose this square here, and so I must consume everything above it and to the right of it. This time, there's nothing above, but there are four pieces to the right. So in total, I consume five pieces of chocolate. After that, it goes back to being your turn. You might consume this piece of chocolate here, and once more, there's nothing above it, but there are two to the right. So you end up consuming three pieces of chocolate. It goes back to me. I might choose this piece here, and if I do, there are two above, three to the right, and thus I eat six pieces of chocolate in total. On your turn, you can eat this piece of chocolate here, and then it becomes my turn. And because everyone is obligated to eat at least one piece on their turn, I am forced to consume the poison, and I lose. You win. Resetting the chocolate bar, here's your puzzle for today. You go first. Find a strategy that guarantees you the win. In other words, there is a way that you can force me to eat the poison no matter what I do. And it's your task to figure out the set of strategies on your part that will force me to do that. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to apply backward induction. It's a topic I cover in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. And broadly speaking, it says that you should think about what the end of the game looks like and use that information to inform what are good and bad moves earlier on. Are you ready for the solution? If not, here's a hint. Your opening move, and in fact, the only move that will allow you to win the game if I am playing perfectly, is to start off by eating just the top right corner. Are you ready now? If not, as the hint about backward induction suggested, why not think about this smaller game instead? Imagining that we got to this state. How would this play out? Who wins? Who loses from here? If you can figure this out, you might be able to progressively add more complications to the chocolate bar and figure out how to win from the start. Okay, let's work our way through it. Imagine that you ended your turn with the chocolate bar looking like this. Then no matter what I do on my turn, you are guaranteed to win. If I just take the top piece, then you can take the right piece on your turn, and then I consume the poison. If I take the right piece on my turn, then you can take the top piece, and once more, I am forced to eat the poison on my turn. As a consequence, you really want the chocolate bar to look like this at the end of your turn. As a result, if the chocolate bar looks like this on your turn, you have an easy way to win. You eat that top right piece, and as a consequence of what we just discussed, there is nothing I can do from there to win. You're going to emerge victorious, and I'm going to be forced to eat the poison. 
Now let's roll back one step and think about what would happen if we had a chocolate bar that looked like this at the end of your turn. Thus, it is now up to me to move. And if we work through all of my options, I'm not going to win. As we just saw, I cannot win by consuming that bottom right piece. But nothing else will work for me either. For example, if I consume the entire top row, on your turn, you can consume all of the chocolate that remains that's not poisoned and force me to eat the poison on my turn. If instead I were to consume just the top right corner, on your turn, you can consume the bottom rightmost piece, and as we saw earlier, this is not a position I can win from. Alternatively, I could consume everything to the right, leaving just the first column. But if I do that, then once more, you can eat just that top piece and force me to eat the poison. There's nothing I can do to win from this position. And as a consequence, if we were to instead find a position that looks like this at the beginning of your turn, you can force a win. All you have to do is take that top right piece. You might see a pattern that's forming here. If at the end of your turn, the bottom row has exactly one more piece than the top row, you're locked into a winning position. And in fact, that sort of strategy works for the larger chocolate bar. Let's visualize that. Here we have the full chocolate bar. And there's a way that you can have exactly one more piece on the bottom than on the top at the beginning of the game. You simply remove that top right corner, as the hint suggested. From here, you are always able to return to this sort of position, where there's exactly one more piece on the bottom than on the top. Do you see why? There are only a couple of ways I can move from here. Option one is to take more away from the top. But if I do that, on your turn, you can remove just as many pieces as I removed on my previous turn. And if you do that, you end up once again with a chocolate bar that has exactly one more piece on the bottom than on the top. The other way I could play it is to remove from the bottom. But if I do that, I have to leave a rectangle behind. And if I've left a rectangle behind, then you can just take the top right piece, and once more, there is exactly one more square on the bottom than there is on the top. Again, what this means is that at the end of your turn, there is always one more piece on the bottom than on the top. And as long as that's true, no matter what I do on my turn, you can always recreate that same position on your turn. If I take this one, you take that one. If I take these three, you take that one. If I take these two, you take those two. If I take these two, you take those two. And lo and behold, there's still exactly one more piece on the bottom than on the top. But it's the poison, and so I have to consume it on my turn which means I lose, and you win. Congratulations. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.